I was reading all my comments and I was reading all my messages after the fights on 271, after the main event, and one thing became very, very clear. We must start appreciating Adesanya more before he's retired. Simple as that. As simple as that. I saw so many people online underplaying what he's doing and how he's doing it and what we're getting to see because remember rightly we have a champion that is active every four months we have a champion of that caliber we have a champion of that entertainment the different looks that he brings to the UFC the excitement that he brings around his f fights the like I said entertainment he brings around his fights the build up the lead up his own YouTube channel he, he's such a superstar in the sport and to have that constant activity is incredible number one but like I said what he's doing and how he's doing it because Adesanya has found something that not a lot of fighters find in their UFC career the ability to relentlessly win now I know people are going to say about the Yan fight yeah he lost one fight we look at middleweight he's undefeated he's 22 and 0 as a middleweight which is an incredible record an incredible record and what he's doing at middleweight is incredible and how he's doing it is incredible and the way that he's risen up through the ranks and now just relentlessly defending his title and finding a way to win. He doesn't need to go out there and constantly be the aggressor and have these barn burner fights but when you actually watch Adesanya's fights anyway as a pure fan of him as a martial artist you actually realise that even the ones that typically don't look as exciting are still filled with so much skill and so much ability and so much of a level that we don't often see. And we see people like Rob Whittaker. Rob Whittaker is the best middleweight on this earth if he's not called Israel Adesanya. That is a fact. And he has been for a very long time. And we've seen that when he just steamrolled the closest three guys and then got another shot. And then Adesanya has beaten him again. He's very good. He's an incredible striker. And he wasn't able to really get off on, on Adesanya. He he struggled to add to anything other than that double jab or that left hook that he had. Now, I'll come back to why I think that actually was a decent game plan, but that goes to show the level of ability of Adesanya because it's so easy for us to say, oh, Rob should have done this or he should have done that. But when you're in there with someone of that caliber, when you're in there with someone of that kickboxing prowess, one of the most elite strikers we've ever seen in the UFC with a very star-studded list of knockouts on his resume, one being yourself in your previous fight, it's intimidating. He's six foot four. He's heavily muscled. He's big. As me as much as people used to say he's skinny, he's actually a very long limbed, quite dense fighter. He has a lot of power and very long levers. So it's hard to get in on him. Firstly, because of his physical advantages, and then you bolt onto that his feint game, his footwork, his ability to shift southpaw to orthodox after each exchange, and he's constantly flowing between stances, and he has every attack of every stance. So you're looking at this almost six-headed dragon. You're having a look at this octopus fighter in front of you, and it is almost impossible at times to sort of close that distance, close that range. So even though that Rob stuck with just that jab and that left hook, I think it was actually a relatively smart idea looking back on it. Because when I was watching it, I was thinking, oh, he could have capitalized on more moments. And I remember Bispin saying the same thing in commentary. And I remember agreeing and thinking, there's times where he could pick that up a little bit. But maybe that was a smart idea. Now, I know he didn't win the fight, so it's always going to be our oh, what-ifs. But it could have been the read from, from Bobby Knuckles that Izzy was looking that sharp, was looking that present, which I think he was, that any lapse or any overexertion, even slight, could have been the end of it. So he didn't want to add much more onto that, which I think is fair enough. And I think at the time was actually a probably a, a pretty good idea. Now, I know you could say, oh, that's stupid because he lost, but... Think about it like this. He had a decision. And a lot of people are arguing he won. Now, I'm personally not. And when I left watching that fight, I didn't think anyone thought that he won until I got online and until he started saying it, which did surprise me. And like I said, I'll come back to that on another day. But to get it that close, he obviously didn't do a lot wrong. He obviously got some takedowns. He didn't control them much, didn't establish much dominance from that. So that's why they weren't heavily scored, if scored at all, which I think a lot of people factored in to the rounds for Rob. But going back to the just the ability of Adesanya, there's so many nuances and finer details that we cannot see watching. We cannot 
possibly see. And you heard Rob say after the first round that he's got to my legs. He's got to my legs. And that's something that Izzy does so well, is disables your best weapon, whatever that may be. We see so many fighters freeze almost because... They get one part of their body or their offense completely taken away from them. And we look at the low kicks. Now, Izzy has become one of the best low kickers in the game. And the thing with Izzy is because of the diversity of the attacks, because of where he can throw his kicks, it makes it that much more effective because he doesn't need to consistently just chop on the low kick. He'll go high, he'll go to the body, will come up with knees. So it's always keeping you guessing. And they are powerful. And the thing with Rob is he comes from that karate background he has that sort of style and feel to his fights his strengths are bouncing in and out of range and using that jab and staying very side on and being quite quick footed so as soon as that front leg starts to go his chances of winning the fight diminish vastly and then you think about him initiating grappling exchanges and getting to the hips and driving off that front leg everything becomes more difficult so you could see how defeated he looked after the first round and To be perfectly honest, I was very worried for Rob after that first round. So he overcame a lot, I think, mentally as well as physically because he spoke about all the mental work he'd done and I believe that he'd done that. But after that first round, it almost felt like all those sessions had peeled back a little bit and he was just looked very, very dejected on the stall. He's seeing the man that knocked him out last time dominate his again disable one of his weapons his front leg and then also drop him at the end of the first round as well so he actually done incredible in that fight the more i verbalize it because of what he actually had to overcome as well so props to rob props to rob but going back to what i said at the start of the video we have to appreciate adesanya more we have to the level of his striking and what he does and how he does it is is incredible. He's lapping the division, but actually watching his fights, watching his fights and the chess that is going on behind the scenes, because sometimes it, it will visually see a feint. Sometimes we'll visually see a bit of foot movement or a nice, str- a nice straight or a nice jab or whatever it may be, but those tiny details, those tiny little signals that he's giving off constantly when he's striking is fascinating to watch and it's fascinating to watch his opponents having to solve that puzzle because I would argue you look at that middleweight division and Robert Whittaker, barring Israel, is the most cerebral and the most present of fighters when it comes down to striking. That's why the fight with him and Till looked the way it did because it was such a chess match because Till's not far off that sort of pace as well. So, yeah, we got to start showing a bit more love. we got to start showing a bit more love. He's found that recipe of winning and he knows how to win. He doesn't need to overexert himself and he does. He goes into cruise control and a lot of people can can say what they want about that but he's going in there, he's doing his job, he's getting another title defence and what you have to remember for Izzy... He's not necessarily going in for the best fights, although he does have a lot of great fights. He's not going in for the best fights. He's not going in for any other reason. He's not going in for money. He's going in for one reason. Legacy. Legacy. So another name, another win, another, I would argue, dominant performance. And it's just another tick. It's just another feather in the cap. And he's he's dominating that division. I don't think the fight with Jared Cannonier is going to be any different to any of the other fights. You have a look at someone like Paolo Costa, resilient, tough, durable powerful good ground game Uh, he's got it all there he's got it all there but we saw what happened with him we saw i don't want to get mma maths but we saw Whitaker and cannoneer i just don't think anyone's beating izzy until maybe one guy in the world's away division but that video is for another day anyway as always if you enjoyed the video please hit subscribe we're getting near 500 subscribers which is quite crazy so keep supporting the page i very much appreciate it and take care of yourselves peace